From reappearing on America's Got Talent's latest show to reaching the semifinals on La France Un Incroyable Talent. Here's what happened to Sacred Rihanna from America's Got Talent. Remember her from season 13? Yep, the one with that doll. Ever wondered where she went after getting eliminated in the quarterfinal? She came back to where she got her fame from. America's Got Talent recently launched its brand new show, AGT All Stars. It premiered on January 2nd, 2023. And let me tell you something, it was a superstar showdown. They brought together 60 incredible former contestants from all over the world, representing all the Got Talent franchises. And Sacred Rihanna came back with the other 59 contestants. But that isn't all she did after her elimination. She also made an appearance on Britain's Got Talent in 2019. Yep, she took part in the champion's spin-off for Britain's Got Talent. Unfortunately, though, her journey on that stage was cut short after she was eliminated in the first round. But that didn't stop her from earning her fame. The girl made rounds in the media with her thrilling journey on America's Got Talent. She became the second Indonesian contestant to grace the show after Demi and Aditya, and boy did she steal the spotlight. Now here's the juicy bit. Rihanna had a mischievous knack for messing with none other than Mel B, one of the judges on the show. During her audition, she took a photo of Mel and then displayed a bunch of different photos of suspected murder victims on the desk. Mel B had to choose one photo and a name from the names displayed. Guess what? The name she picked matched the suspect revealed by the sacred Rihanna, complete with a picture in an old newspaper. It was like some supernatural connection. In episode 1309, the sacred Rihanna took her performance to a whole new level. She played with an imaginary friend giving a hyper-realistic and spine-chilling performance. The judges were left speechless and gave her a resounding yes, propelling her straight to the quarterfinals. But her quarterfinal performance was even more hair-raising. She handed a look-alike voodoo doll to Mel B and created an illusion where her doubles emerged from the audience and swarmed the stage while the real sacred Rihanna climbed up a ladder. It sent shivers down everyone's spines and the performance was cut short after a terrified scream and a sudden commercial break. Now, here's where things get interesting. Some fans were left wondering if the performance was meant to end that way. They expected a continuation after the break, but when the show resumed, it went straight to the judges' comments without any explanation. Turns out, the cut was planned all along. It wasn't a mistake or a technical glitch. According to a leaked document from the show's crew, the cut was intentionally designed to leave the audience in suspense. Despite the abrupt ending, Rihanna's performance garnered a ton of sympathy from fans. It became the most viewed performance of the night, racking up over 1 million views on YouTube alone. And that's what got her all the fame she needed. And if you still want more, she's got her podcast on Spotify called Kisa Horror, The Sacred Rihanna. In this podcast, she documents the backstory she tells during her performances. And to top it all off, The Illusionist has got her own snack. Yep, you heard that right. She teamed up with the gourmet popcorn brand Overdose and created her very own flavor, the x Varian Mix. The Got Talent franchise wasn't the first time she appeared on TV. She had already made waves in the world of entertainment. In 2014, she showcased her peculiar talents on The Next Mentalist and ended up as the runner-up. But that's not all. She even became a judge on a show called The Great Magician Show. Before that, she made an appearance on Asia's Got Talent as well. And boy, did she make an impression. This time, she aimed to scare not just the AGT judges, but also David Foster, Angun, and Jay Park. With each act she performed, Rihanna cranked up the horror factor and unleashed mind-boggling magic tricks, leaving the viewers both stunned and spooked. Right from the start, Rihanna had her sights set on Angun. It was like she had a bone to pick with her and wanted her as a volunteer for her terrifying tricks. But as the competition progressed, she decided to switch things up. She roped in Jay Park as well, probably figuring that she should give someone else a chance to feel the chills too. And guess what? The audience loved her. Rihanna's spine-tingling performances earned her enough public votes and she walked away with the ultimate title. Now here's a twist. Beyond all the spookiness and eerie magic, the sacred Rihanna is just your ordinary gal when she's not on the stage. Yup, you heard that right. 
If you take a peek at her Facebook page, you'll see a side of her that's far from the haunting character she portrays. There are actual pictures of her without that signature long-sleeved gown and the voodoo doll by her side. It's almost surreal to see her in a family photo, hanging out with her loved ones, a complete contrast to the persona she embodies on stage. And hey, she's even got selfies where she's flashing a smile and showing her face without any eerie makeup and spooky hair. So, where does she get her inspiration from? While growing up in Indonesia, Rihanna looked up to none other than the legendary magician David Copperfield. But that isn't where she got all her inspiration from. She crafted her stage persona from a film character named Sadako Yamamura. Sadako is the spooky antagonist from the famous Ringu film series. So you know that hair and weird looks? All that was inspired by Sadako. No wonder it sent chills down our spine. Now let's talk about the cultural differences that played a role in the sacred Rihanna's journey. Growing up in Indonesia, an Asian country, she was deeply influenced by Asian culture, which heavily shapes the concept of magic in that region. This cultural distinction didn't quite resonate with the American audience. You see, in America, magic acts often emphasize the impressive tricks and illusions themselves. The focus is on the mind-blowing spectacle they create. On the other hand, Asian magic shows take a different approach. They focus more on the storytelling and plot, incorporating illusions into a larger narrative. It's all about the journey and the story being told. So, there was a cultural clash happening here. Some American viewers may have been expecting a different kind of performance and found the sacred Rihanna's act to be less scary or impactful from their perspective. In fact, some viewers even refused to vote for her because they didn't consider her act to be frightening enough. This difference in approach might explain why some American viewers didn't find the sacred Rihanna's act as impressive as expected. For them, the act may have lacked the scare factor they were used to. American horror tends to rely on jump scares, gruesome imagery, and shocking moments. Meanwhile, Asian horror leans more toward curses, spirits, and supernatural elements. So Rihanna's unique blend of Asian-inspired magic and horror didn't resonate with everyone, which led to her not winning AGT. Despite all that, she became the first AGT contestant to have her very own film, and let me tell you, she did a lot more after that as well. In 2020, she starred in a Disney film called Star Girl, where she brought the character of Grace to life. Rihanna also made not one, but two appearances on the show Masters of Illusion. She first wowed the audience and viewers in late May, and then she did it again in mid-June. She also made a special guest appearance on Indonesia's Got Talent. During Fritz's grand finals performance, she added a touch of her mystical presence to the stage. And in the same year, she reached the semi-finals of La France Ayun Incroyable Talent in season seven. So there you have it from reaching the semi-finals on La France Ayun Incroyable Talent to reappearing on America's Got Talent's latest show. That's what happened to Sacred Rihanna from America's Got Talent.